Hey, um, I'm re-recording this video, actually, because I just thought of a great title, which you've read, and if you've seen my channel, if any of the nine subscribers have seen my channel, I'm a Thrift of Life fanboy, if you didn't know. So I copied his video title because I spent today at one Goodwill, just covering up any potentially important information, $221, exactly the same amount as he did in that video. So I figured, hey, let's divert some of his search traffic. This is the best find of the day. I will show you what that is in a little bit, but we first have to get through everything. First item, I was super happy when I found this because they didn't price it up. It's $5 for something that you may or may not be able to see because it's translucent, but it's Patagonia. You should probably be able to see that size large. Henley, this is the Daily Henley, long sleeve Daily Henley. Should actually get like 25 for this. Eh, might not price it quite that high. I do just want to move it. This Goodwill prices up everything, all right? Even if they don't know what it is, they'll still price it up because I swear there's no way they know some of these brands. Um, but yeah, they just randomly price everything up and their base price for jeans is $13, which is why I never get any jeans from there, except for I did get one pair this time. Uh, this is a brand I looked up because it looked like it could be something, and it was. It's a, I assume, designer brand. I mean, if it's the name of a person, or what sounds like the name of a person, it's probably a designer. Only four bucks, um, but good, really good prices. Should get minimum 20 plus shipping on this, just basic t-shirt. And the sell-through is about two-thirds, which is really strong for designer brands. So then I got two of these here that are blinding you because the opacity just does not like it. I don't think opacity is the right word there, but whatever. New with tags, Carhartt, uh, size 2XL, like visor, high visibility shirts. I can't remember what these are called. There's like, I don't remember what the name of these are called, but you, you've seen people wear these, right? Uh, two of them, and they're both new with tags. And there are comps of these that have sold for over 25 pre-owned, which is really high for Carhartt. Typically basic shirts from Carhartt don't sell for more than like 15 to 20 but I guess those are particularly valuable because they're maybe less common. I don't know. This is a pleasant surprise. Nike Air Jordan, which is a good subline of Nike. Pretty much the only subline that I that seems to be consistently a good seller for me. Um, but it's a size XL sweatpants. These have almost 100% sell through and sell for like 25 bucks minimum plus shipping. That's really high for Air Jordan, even, and really high for Nike in general, but for such a big line of Nike, I guess that's a thing. That's a new bolo. Oh, these are joggers, too, which is probably a good thing. Eh, I don't know. They have the drawstring with an elastic thing there, so I may be able to market these as joggers, but I think sweatpants would probably be a slightly more correct term. R regardless, really good bolo. Nike Air Jordan sweatpants. I would have never known. Okay, this was the riskiest buy, definitely, by far. This was, um, it cost me $13, which is why it's risky. If it was, even if it was 10 probably wouldn't really care that much. But it's a Cabela's for kids, and I, I don't know if you can read that, but it's uh, a down puffer vest in camo. These reach, these on the pre owned market for eBay don't sell for less than $40 plus shipping. That's the absolute minimum, I think, one is going for, and I think that one's an auction as well. Um, and the sell-through is almost 100%. It's like 14 actives, 12 souls, which is good enough for me. Kid stuff typically sells for less. However, I'm going to price this at the bottom of the market, and because there are no... Well, for two reasons. One, there are no kids Cabela's down puffer vests, so this is going to hit an entirely different market of people who are probably willing to spend up if they're going to pay for a Cabela's camel vest. And two, it's a kid's medium, which would fit, this feels like it would fit a women's small. This would pit, fit a particularly petite woman. So I may list this in two categories. Not entirely sure. I am going to have to put kids in the title, so you never know. This, well, I um, was a little hesitant on because it has this big embroidered patch on here. It's a foot joy polo, how, and it was only $6, which is, they don't really price this at 7 or 8 but it's new with tags, so easy buy. Gonna have to price this down a bit, because that is a pretty conspicuous 
um, embroidery right there. It's not a company logo, so it's not that bad, but it's pretty, like, that's pretty loud. Granted, Twitjoy pulled this sell for like 40 bucks plus shipping me with tax. So if I just price that at 30, it should pop. Uh, there's another one, Footjoy Polo. This one's not new with tags, but $6, and this one's plain in a good color, navy blue, and quite a popular color. Um, Footjoy is a, I wouldn't quite say underrated brand, but it's just not a brand that that many people talk about. Um, maybe if I make another five common brands, that'll probably be in it. This was potentially the only mistake I made. I don't know. Um, this is a... $10 Vintage Wrangler Pearl Snap Western shirt. It's really heavy twill. Um, it's a plaid as well. I'm going to price this at $30 plus shipping and see, see what happens. I thought this would be worth more because typically the, the sort of ostentatious Vintage Wrangler is. This may not have been exactly what we're going for. It's more likely you want something that's Southwestern, Aztec, a boho type thing is really what you're going for in terms of the Vintage Wrangler western shirts if this was six dollars bought it in a heartbeat not a mistake at all but I'm pro i might have to price this at like 20 plus shipping so that's that's a little bit too thin of a margin for me i'll still make money though so not really a big mistake anyways what i'm saying is pearl snap western vintage wrangler shirts i love buying and i love selling 10 bucks is a little steep though uh a duluth trading co 4xl henley shirt for six dollars no brainer there uh, Duluth Trading, a good brand. There's about two X sell through on these four XL Henley shirts, so should have no trouble flipping this. This is a different Cookie Street tag. Um, this is one of my Bolo brands. This is a geometric abstract thing. Should sell for twenty plus shipping. Honestly, I I expected seventeen or eighteen, but I'm really I am getting sales at twenty plus shipping for these. I'm not having to send out that off best offers. Cookie Street has just been a really really solid brand for me. This was, uh, that was $6, this was $8. This is, um, so this is something that I was not able to read, but it looked like it could be valuable, so I figured maybe the brand name was on the material tag, and it was, which is down here, but it also gave me another crucial piece of information, which is why I actually decided to look it up. So it is, oh, you cannot read that. Well, it's steady, it's rock steady. Rock steady clothing, and it's made in USA, which is why I bothered to look it up. Pretty good sell through, pretty good numbers, maybe 25 plus shipping for this basic shirt. Um, this is probably gonna be like the Wranglers, the normal vintage Wranglers that aren't like super ostentatious. This was um, a brand that I did not think was nearly as good. I know that Athleta is sort of on women's clothing reselling, just considered one of the best brands. It's like Athleta and Lululemon are the two main um, women's athletic brands that people look for. I looked up Athleta one time, and I think I just happened to get unlucky and looked up one that had a really glutted market, but this is a size 10, it's $8, almost for it sell through on this specific, I think it's the Brooklyn Ankle Pant, almost for it sell through on these, um, and really good prices, like 40, 50 bucks, like really, really good prices, um, and these have a very small pinhole right there. But it's so small that I think I'm going to cut off the little threads that are coming off of it because that makes it look worse. And then probably just disclose it and price it at the bottom of the market. And the demand is so high that I highly doubt that's going to flip. It's going to take longer than a month to flip just based on the sell-through metric. This was $4. Didn't bother looking it up because it's a, it's a Marmot, which is a decent brand. Marmot size... Can you read that? No. Size XXL, blue graphic t-shirt. For four bucks, I'll make money off of that, probably 15 plus shipping, and more than double my money, so no complaining to be done there. The one sport coat I picked up from this, I don't think my Goodwill even stocks these very much anymore, because the section has been dwindling recently. I don't know why, I guess people just don't donate these at all, um, which I guess is realistic, but I don't know. Polo University Club by Ralph Lauren, vintage. It was only six dollars because they price all these down. Vintage, um, two button window pane. Not really houndstooth. If it is, it's a very like, not very good houndstooth. Um, it's made for Macy's, so you know. But for six dollars, I can realistically flip that 
from six dollars into twenty five plus shipping. It's like that's like a realistic flip. It's it's pretty pretty. I would be pretty surprised if that doesn't flip in a couple months at that price and. The margin is great, especially because I had shipping. It's not like I'm losing money on the shipping. Ooh, this was this might be my favorite find. This or the last item is probably my favorite find. So these are windbreaker pants, joggers. Yeah, uh, these are borderline joggers. I don't know if I can quite call those joggers. They're like track pants from Under Armour, and the size tag has been cut off, but the logo is still there. Under Armour. And I picked these up despite being $8 because of this. This is the first time I've ever found this and bought it. I found one at a, a flea, flea market, but they wanted like 50 bucks for it. Gore Windstopper. So Gore is uh, the, you know, it's the company that makes Gore-Tex, which is a really expensive fab fabric um, that's basically waterproof but breathable. That's the whole idea behind it. They used it to land the astronauts on the moon. Um, and it's really expensive stuff. The sell through on these is not phenomenal, but it sells for like 40, 50, 60, more than, I've seen a couple sell for over $100. This will price at the bottom, again, because I want to move it and also because the size tag is missing. So it's not a huge flaw, but um, people will actually have to know their measurements in order to, you know, realistically buy this or they're going to have to trust my sizing, which is not perfect. This was another Bolo find. This is the first time I found this brand. Uh, should sell for 25 plus shipping, which is really good for considering what it is. Figs, the Lululemon of Scrubs. Really does honestly feel kind of like Lululemon, and it feels a lot better than pretty much any other scrubs that I've ever felt. Just a pair of scrub bottoms selling for 25 pre-owned is pretty ridiculous, um, considering the prices are just like not there for any other brand, with the exception of Janu. The t-shirts were good to me today, finally. It's been a while since the Goodwill t-shirts have been good. Dark Seas Division XL t-shirts have 2XL through, but the prices are eh, they're like 15-ish is probably the max I'm going to get for this. It cost me $6, so I'm resigning myself to a lower profit margin because I know I can quick flip this based on the sell through, which is why I was happy to do this. <clears throat> um, it, I'll probably still double my money though, probably get at least $6. This is the one pair of jeans that I picked up. It is an immaculate pair of vintage jeans. These are vintage made in USA, 100% cotton denim. Just like almost like borderline new without tags. I may, I may list these as new without tags because they are just in incredible condition. From this brand, Prison Blues from, it's from Real Intimates, Real Inmates. And it's vintage made in USA. The size is below this, and that that this tag actually looks pretty contemporary, but this tag is definitely vintage. Size 38 by 32. Really, like, quite heavy, just immaculate condition vintage jeans. And these, the lowest active comp for this, for the 38 by 32s is 35. So if they're coming in price at 33 or so, it should pop, considering just how good of condition it is. In. This is a, uh, a vintage UCLA t-shirt from the pr proprietary brand, like, I don't know, proprietary, so whatever. it's from UCLA, and it's vintage, you can tell it's made in USA, that's, the tag feels very papery, generally a good indication that it's vintage. Pretty easy buy there. Um, not quite as good as one of the Ivies, like uh, Harvard, uh, Yale, Princeton, also, you know, more prestigious colleges like Stanford, MIT. Um, Oxford is pretty good, Cambridge, all those. UCLA is already relatively prestigious, so that one also holds some value. Um, but the vintage stuff, or any big college, like their own brand, not just the graphic, but if it's like their own brand, typically going to be worth it. And if it's vintage, probably going to be worth more. This is not that. However, this is another UCLA t-shirt, and it's vintage Russell dead stock. Um... For eight dollars but worth it that is a UCLA vintage turd should be pretty easy flipping that graphic is pretty good and it's in immaculate condition okay this is a semi sheer John Varvatos uh, I guess pseudo Henley I don't know if this technically counts as a Henley shirt I'm gonna use the keyword Henley shirt 
I might call it a semi-Henley or a pseudo-Henley. I might call it Henley-ish. Um, that might be a little weird. Um, but this is a semi-sheer, like, it's borderline sheer. And it was $6, uh, over 100% sell through on these. Again, that's a Thrift Life pickup, knowledge pickup. I've seen him pick up one of those types of shirts and a lot of the Henleys and over 100% sell through on those. Again, a lot of vintage t-shirts today, for at least compared to, you know, what I normally get. A vintage Star Wars t-shirt, size XL. $7, and it is the Star Wars branded. And it's a Yoda Christmas shirt. That may not sell until Christmas time or December, but should be a pretty safe, pretty safe buy, pretty safe sale. I would be surprised if that doesn't sell. Um during Christmas and probably will sell before just because that's like the type of thing that someone wants. At least as far as I am know, that's the type of vintage t-shirt that people like. Duluth Trading Co. 4XL. Uh, I showed you another one of these. Same thing, but this one's gray. And this one might... This or the other one has like a very small dot on it, but it's like super tiny. Don't be, and I doubt people will actually care that much. This is the third time I've found this brand in a thrift store and it never fails to make me super excited it is if you don't recognize that logo cool thirteen dollars for this pair of pants well worth it should flip for minimum 40 probably closer to 50. maybe 60 i doubt that though probably 40 to 50 is around what this is going to flip for these are um the lawless pant which i did find by looking the style code but it turns out that the name was already in there um and these also are the vintage patina die, which I believe is a value add. Just, oh my gosh, I am so excited about finding cool every single time. I love it. Outdoors brand, similar to Patagonia, um, but holds more value on the resale market because the, dem the demand is still very high and the supply is considerably lower. All right, final item. This I actually saw and then came back to get because I, I didn't know it was going to be good. This is another Athleta. This is an Athleta Brooklyn Jogger in a big size, size 12 tall. It was $10, but should get minimum 30 on this. Um, prices were good. Sell-through was about 80%, I think. And these are joggers, as you can see. I saw these, decided not to look them up, then looked up the other pair of joggers from Athleta that was in the... Um, that I showed you pre showed you earlier in the video, and then was like, oh, Athleta joggers are good. So then I remembered where this one was, went, found it, looked it up, it was decent, threw it in the cart, bought it, we're done. Okay, we are 18 minutes into the video, and I have not shown you the best find of the day, which I already explained was this. Okay, I'm not going to hide the logo. This is a jacket, a parka jacket, that cost me... A ridiculous amount of money for a thrift store selling clothing but I still bought it because yeah $30 and I think you can tell with that logo conspicuously hiding in the background it's Patagonia this is a Patagonia straight out I looked at the style code these are, this is a Patagonia straight out parka really heavy duty like just Massive, not downfilled. Surprisingly, I thought this would have been downfilled, but it is not. Um, I had turned it inside out for some reason. I don't know why. Um, there it is. Look at this thing. Like this thing weighs like four pounds, maybe five. Eh, yeah, this thing might weigh like five pounds actually. I could be wrong about that. But, like, like this thing is just massive. Um, Parka. Maybe vin maybe vintage, um, and yeah. So so this thing, and, and like I'm literally talking right here, and it is blocking the noise from outside. It it makes it sound really quiet, which I honestly kind of like. Anyways, um, yeah, this was thirty dollars worth minimum a hundred, um, probably worth more. There's one active comp for hundred and ten plus shipping, and that one does not have the hood. So if I come in and price this at like 120, 130, I would be surprised if it lasts longer than a couple weeks. Either that or I keep it, because this does fit me. 
Um, and if I ever want to go skiing, this is probably the right jacket. I don't know if this is actually a skiing jacket. It's a parka, which I assume is good, but you never know. Anyways, thanks for watching. Um, I'm gloating over my amazing finds today. I'm spending, again, $221, which I got 27 items, so I don't know, like $8, $9 per item on average. But pretty happy with that. Thank you for watching. Farewell. Bye.